Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. In this video we're going to be looking at, uh, again still on the topic of VBA, we're going to be looking at variables. So why the importance of using variables is and to demonstrate that I've created this short story uh, that will go through and we'll sort of talk about the benefits of using variables and obviously I'll show you how to implement variables into this particular example. So as you'll see on the screen, we've got the VBA window um, or developer window on the left here, taking up the majority of the screen as that's what we're predominantly going to be using. And I've just got an Excel sheet what relates to that uh, window on the right here, just so you can see obviously the output. So what I've done so far is we've got a short story here, what's going to appear over four lines. Uh, and if I just run this, you'll see exactly how it comes out. You'll recognize the... Um, the definition I've put in here to obviously refer to this sheet to paste out this text. If you aren't familiar with this, you want to check out the last video. Uh, we'll go through obviously how what basically all this means. Uh, but in, otherwise, you should rather follow along with uh, entering exactly the same text, and you'll get the same result. So what I'm going to do is hit F5, and you can see what the output we now have into Excel. So our story is there once was a man named Tim. He was 70 years old. He liked the name Tim, but he didn't like being 70. So this is sort of a simple little story that just constructed together to help us work with variables. So the reason we want to use a variable is in the circumstance that with our story, we suddenly decide we want to change the character's name. So at the moment, the character is called Tim, and you can see he appears twice within this story. So if we were to want to change his name to maybe, I don't know, Paul, at the moment, we'd have to go into each line and change this to Paul. We then have to go into this third line and change that to Paul as well. And obviously, if we hit F5, you can now see that the name has been updated to Paul. And for this short story, just updating in two rows isn't too much of a pain. Uh, but obviously, if you had hundreds of rows or even more, uh, like you're actually updating a full story or full um, full line, a full big set of codes, shall I say, kind of the words out, then obviously that would be quite a painful process. And also, if we wanted to change the age as well, so let's say we wanted to change it to 40, again, we've got to look through everywhere where that age appears. Oh, there's also 40 at the end here. And you can see that obviously it, it just opens you up for causing more errors if you forget to update a particular reference. And as you can see, that's now all updated there. So the solution for that is using variables. And what a variable is, it allows us to store a piece of information within a heading of, say, character type, character name. And then what we can do is everywhere we reference the name within the story, instead we reference this variable, what will dynamically update as that variable changes itself. So all we need to do is, you see I've entered a couple of lines at the top here. I'm just going to enter character underscore name and do uh, space equals, and then within quotations, we're gonna call him Tim. We'll go back to where we started off. And then next thing we'll do is enter another row, and this time we'll call, well not call, but we'll set a variable for character age, and within there we'll go for the age of 70. And let's just add one more space there so we can see. So at the moment, obviously we've got our, our variables here, but at the moment we need to now add, uh, include these into our story. So to do that, we just need to make a couple of changes. So the first one is where we've got this name Paul here. We just need to remove the name Paul. So at the moment, you can see it reads, there once was a man named space comma. Well, because we want to retain that space after the word name or named, we're going to enter another quotation here. And you, then what we're going to do is we're going to go space and and symbol. We'll do another space, and then this time we're going to type character name. We're then going to do another space, a second and symbol, and then lastly, a quotation. So you can see how this is now constructed together. So we've got a string, what's this first part here? There once was a man named, with a quotation mark. We've then got the part what refers to our variable, so the character name. And then we've got another string that we're adding on to the end of this, just to conclude our little comma we have there. And what you can see is obviously we're using the and symbols obviously to connect all these two together. So if we wanted to just do, if we didn't have character name, and sorry if I'm going off on this tangent, what we could do in here is put bare in quotations, enter, and you can see how that works with text 
Uh, just using these AND symbols allows us to basically uh, concatenate uh, multiple strings together. But obviously for our example here, we don't want to include this bit of string here. We literally just want to include our variable, what is character name. And then we just need to do that again to our second reference, what we've got down here. So he liked the name, the name Paul. So we do a quotation and symbol uh, character underscore name and symbol. And then we can remove Paul and obviously include our comma at the end there. So we can see we've got Tim as our variable. At the moment, we've got a mixture of names here. But if I just now hit F5, you can see how they're both now updated to Tim. And then going forwards, if I want to now change this name again, so let's call him John, and hit, uh, let's just keep a couple of J's, keep it all proper, hit F5 now, you can see that how John is now replaced as the name. And this is exactly the same for when we come to update the age. So all we now need to do is he was, quotation, and character underscore age, and get rid of the 40. And the, the trick with this, but you'll obviously see as it comes out, is just remembering to include spaces within the strings either side where you want it. So obviously if I was to remove this one from here, and now hit in, uh, F5, sorry, you can see that it's, it's grouped the 70 and the years together. So it's just remembering to keep those spaces in when you need, but that should be quite an easy one to sort of identify as you put it in. And the last one, we've got this 40 at the end here. So all you need to do is get rid of the 40 and character underscore age and just another little and at the end there just so we can keep that full stop. So let's now change this completely different name. Let's go for James and let's make him uh, 45. And you can see that the code has completely updated. So we have now got our variables working for our character a character name sorry and the character age. And the benefit of using this as well is if you suddenly decide that you know you want to start your story off with these two variables, but later on the character age for whatever reason, uh, not character age, the character name changes for whatever reason, all you need to do to override this variable is, I'm just going to copy, place it in here. So if we suddenly decide later on that actually we want the character name to now be Jim, all we need to do is bring that variable back in again. And the second time it's used, it's just going to now override what was previously stored. So it's now going to replace it with Jim. If I hit enter, you can see you've now got Jim in there. Uh, could be only a very few examples where you might want to do this. Well, actually, it'll probably be a few more examples as we go further on with more advanced um, functionality that we're trying to do with our VB code. But that just goes to show you that you can override that as well. So at the moment, you'll see that both our name and our age are just stored as two, two um, variables. But this, is, this isn't really the uh, correct way that we should be coding our variables. We need to actually tell the VB code or tell Excel uh, what type of content we're storing in those variables. So at the moment, it's just going to store both of these as a variable. What is fine, and VB will soon work out what the content is and then include that as it has required. So because each of our variables, so James and 45, are surrounded by these quotations, what's going to happen is it's getting stored as a string. So the VB code looks at this, it says, right, it looks like those two are pieces of string, therefore I'm going to store those as strings. Although it's actually stuck, it's actually storing them as variables. The reason we don't want to store it as this variable as we've got here is because it's one, best practice, and also two, you're actually going to be storing and using up more memory than you need. So obviously what happens when you define a variable is our program is storing these in its memory, these variables, so that you can obviously call upon those at any point when you need in your code. And obviously if you're storing all your um, variables like this, so you're not defining exactly what they are, you are going to chance, or chances are you're going to be using up a lot more memory than you need to, and this could impact you in terms of speed, uh, among other things, as your code obviously grows and gets bigger. So how do we store these as the required variables? Well, simply all we do is we go back to the top here, and now what I can do is enter the word dim, and this time I'm going to do character underscore name, and I'm going to type the word as string. So a string is basically uh, 
refers to storing text. So string is the variable you'd want to use anywhere where you're storing text. The other one we have, or the other main one, should I say, is going to be an integer for numbers. So dim character underscore age as integer. And then what I also then need to do is I can just amend this to show the 45 is actually not a string. And so we'll talk through this. So character name as string. So a string is basically either a word or uh, a sentence. So basically a string of text. Uh, so anywhere where you want to store text, you're going to record it as a string. And anywhere where you've got a number, so for us we've got a whole number of 45, we want to store that as an integer. So for those who are not aware, an integer is basically a whole number. So if we had a decimal place here, it wouldn't work because an integer doesn't hold those decimal places. It's whole numbers only. And I'll be going into more detail about these different uh, data types. I just wanted to touch on it briefly in this video so you're aware of, sort of the best practice of what we'll be using going forwards. So in summary, obviously variables are really helpful when we're trying to store information that we want to repetitively use. Uh, and we're going to be using variables a lot, well, and you would find you're using variables a lot in your code as obviously you progress along. When we do use a variable, we need to ensure that we're defining what the variable type is. So for us, you know, we have the word James or the name of James, which is going to be a string. Therefore, we need to divide, define it as a string. And for character age, we've got the number 45, because age is always referred to in a number terms. And for us, we're going to store that as an integer. And this is not only best practice when coding, but also it's going to ensure that the data types we're storing is only using the memory that it needs and not using excessive memory to cause us any problems later on. And you don't have to do your dims all together at the, at the start here when you're defining what your variable is. You could have your definition of character name here, and then you could uh, say what that character name is beneath that. But my personal preference, and as I'll probably you'll notice as I go along, is I often like to define the variables at the start, and then I'll see the variables, obviously, in terms of, I'll state what the variable type is at the first, and then we'll actually set what that variable value is thereafter. So there you go, there is that sort of video going through working with variables. I think I mentioned before, but I'll be doing another video where it goes into a bit more, or goes more in depth into each variable. So it goes into word strings and using strings, and also how to use numbers with your variable types as well. So don't worry, we will be going into more detail with that. So my suggestion would be have a play around with that, try and copy this story into your uh, code, and like I say, ch try playing around with changing the character name and the age, or also creating your own story and using any of the variables that you see fit, just so you again become familiar with entering data that is gonna be obviously placed into Excel and also playing around with these variables and getting comfortable with those. So if you did enjoy that video, please do hit, hit that like button. It's not only appreciated by myself, but it helps that all important YouTube algorithm. If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe to the channel and also make sure you hit that bell notification button so that you are notified of all of our future videos. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Before you go, don't forget to check out the other videos on our channel. You'll see everything from other functions and formulas through to tips and tricks. We've also created some playlists so you can see these categorized together. So make sure you check those out and get all those useful information. And obviously as always, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell notification button.